In this video, we're going to explore workflows in CERB. Workflows are text-based templates that define a set of records and configuration values. They enable anyone to create and share new features in CERB and synchronize ongoing changes between multiple environments. When a workflow is updated, its changes are automatically recorded in a versioned history. Developers can make improvements to a workflow and test them in a fresh copy of CERB on their own machine. A new version of a workflow can be confidently deployed to a staging or production environment, and its records will be automatically synchronized. Changes with unexpected consequences can be easily rolled back to the last stable version. Workflows are located in the search menu in the top right. By default, you'll see a list of the currently installed workflows. You can add a new one by clicking on the plus icon in the top right of the work list. We provide a library of pre-built workflows for common situations, you can modify any of them to meet your specific needs. Let's take a quick look at a few of them. The auto responder workflow sends an automatic response when a new ticket is created. This acknowledges that you received a message and it lets you set expectations up front about office hours and response times. We see that the workflow contains an automation, an event listener, two custom fields in a set, and an example snippet. Auto responses are enabled by adding the auto responder custom field set to a group. Email reply templates can be personalized with placeholders and scripting, and they can be unique per group or shared by any combination of them. The auto dispatcher workflow lets a worker request their next task by clicking a button on a workspace rather than digging through shared work lists. This starts explore mode. The dispatcher assigns the next highest priority task. To continue, a worker must either resolve the task or provide a reason why they can't. This feedback should be used to improve routing and training. The Customer Satisfaction Survey's workflow adds three new record types to track the Net Promoter Score on contacts, Customer Satisfaction on sent messages, and Customer Effort Score on resolved tickets. A workspace is provided for reporting, and a community portal gathers survey responses from your own website. The survey questions can be customized from the workflow configuration. Surveys are enabled per group by adding the Customer Satisfaction custom field set. The survey email template can be customized using snippets. Now let's talk about creating your own workflows. To create a workflow from scratch or to import one from a template, open the search menu in the top right and select Workflows. Then click the plus icon in the top right of the work list. Select the first option, Empty, and click the Continue button at the bottom of the pop-up. You could define records entirely in the template editor, but we recommend creating a minimal record here and then editing it normally in the user interface. For instance, let's create a new automation record. The record alias is the part after the forward slash. The alias is how environments keep the same record synchronized. The minimal fields for an automation are an extension ID, let's use automation.function, and a name, which we'll call example.function. You can do this for multiple records at once. When you're done, Click the Continue button at the bottom of the pop-up. We haven't defined any configuration settings yet, so click Continue again. Then we get a summary of the changes that will be performed. In this example, we're creating one new automation record. If we changed an existing record, you'd see the diff here. Click the Continue button again, and our new automation is created. You can click on the automation name to open its editor right from the workflow, then click the Edit button at the top. You'd write an automation like normal. Let's add a simple description. This is a test function. And we'll add a simple script. Start, return, this is sample output. Click the Save Changes button in the bottom left of the automation editor. Then close the automation pop-up behind it. These record changes have now drifted from our workflow template. Let's update it. Click the Update Template button at the top of the workflow card. Now click the Workflow Builder icon at the end of the Editor toolbar. It's the hammer. This creates the Export Kata for you, so you can just click on Build at the bottom. Copy the new workflow template at the bottom to your clipboard, then close the Builder pop-up. Now replace the template in the Workflow Editor by pasting over it. Click the Continue button twice, and you'll see that the existing automation record has changed. This is where you review your changes before clicking Continue. At this point, you can share the updated workflow template or deploy it in another environment like production. Now let's look at workflow configuration. When you share a workflow, you can allow people to customize it 
using configuration values rather than editing it directly. Continuing with our example, click Update Template again. In the top workflow section, add config. We can add choosers, pick lists, or text values. Let's add a text value called example underscore value, and it will have a label of example. If you wanted to use this new placeholder as the output for the automation, you'd usually use its config placeholder in the script section. However, that will actually modify the automation script every time the configuration value changes, which causes drift. In automations and event listeners, you can instead lazily evaluate the placeholder at runtime using a function. Change the script annotation from at text to at raw. This prevents placeholders and scripting from being evaluated in the workflow itself. Inside start, add a set command. This allows us to set new placeholders. Inside set, define the config key with an at JSON annotation. Its value will be a placeholder. So we use two open curly braces, serb underscore workflow underscore config open parenthesis single quote the name of the workflow closing single quote closing parenthesis this returns a dictionary of config keys and values so we'll use the pipe json underscore encode filter and two closing curly braces this loads the workflow configuration keys and values and outputs them as a json encoded string the at JSON annotation on the config key parses the JSON, so config is now a dictionary. Each key we defined associated with its value and replace the automation output with a placeholder, config.example underscore value, click continue, set example to something like output from workflow config, and click continue two more times. What's going to happen now is the automation will look up the workflow configuration when it runs. You can change the configuration value any number of times, and the automation script remains unchanged. Open up the automation card, click Edit, and simulate the automation from the Run section in the lower left. In the Output section in the lower right, we see that the output it return used the value loaded from the workflow. Go ahead and close the two automation pop-ups. Now let's go over the typical way you'd use workflow configuration values in record fields. Click Update Template in the workflow card. In the config section at the top, add a text value called task underscore name, and we'll give it the label task name. Let's also add a chooser called task underscore owner underscore ID with the label task owner. Then we add a record type of worker. And just for demonstration, let's add a record query of is disabled no to only allow active workers to be selected. Let's delete our example automation record. When we remove it from the workflow, it will be deleted from the system by default. We could change that by adding a deletion policy to the record first with a value of retain. In this case, we want to delete it so we can just remove those lines. Instead, we're going to add a task record called example underscore task for the title. We'll use a placeholder for the configuration value, config.task underscore name. Then we'll set the owner ID field to another placeholder, config.task underscore owner underscore ID. Click the Continue button. Now we can set a task name and owner. This could be different for everyone who uses the workflow. We'll say example task. And for the owner, choose any worker. Now click Continue again. We see the configuration values changing. And we're also creating a task record and deleting the example automation record. Click Continue again, and those changes are made. We can inspect the task record by opening its pop-up. The name and owner are what we'd expect. As a shortcut on workflows, you can click the Edit Configuration button to skip the template editor and update the settings. We could change the name and pick a different owner and click Continue twice again. Inspecting the task again shows those changes. If you've been using CERB for a while, you probably have a bunch of existing records like automations and custom fields that you want to move into workflows. I'll demonstrate how that works. Move things out of the way so you can open the search menu, pick Tasks, and create a new one. Select the Build tab 
and give it the title, This is an Existing Task. Let's bump up the importance and set us as the owner. Then click the Create button. To import this task into the workflow, we'll need its record ID. The easiest way to get that is to add the ID column to task cards. Click Properties, then Edit. Check ID and Fields, and Save Changes. Now we need the workflow CADA for the record, which should match the current fields exactly. Fortunately, you don't have to do this by hand. Instead, click Setup in the top right. From the Developers menu, select Workflow Builder. This uses a CADA syntax to match existing records and export them. For instance, we can now export records of type Task and match our new task by ID. Repeat this to match your particular set of records. Once that's done, you can optionally add a label map to assign an alias to each record. This is how records are referred to in each environment since their record IDs will be different. We'll say task underscore example. Once done, click the Build button. You can use the exported template to create a new workflow, or you can copy the records into another workflow template. We'd copy just the task record. Then back in our workflow, we can update template and paste it. This time, enable the Import Resources option at the bottom of the workflow editor. Add a Records section. It's a task, and we use the same label as in the workflow template, task underscore example. Then we link the ID of the current record. Now when we click Continue twice, we see that the task is being updated rather than created. The workflow will start managing the existing record. Click Continue again to save it. Finally, let's delete the workflow, which will also delete our test records. Click the Delete button at the bottom of the workflow pop-up. This will show us which records will be deleted or retained. After reviewing, click Continue again and confirm Yes. Now you should have a pretty solid grasp of how to use workflows in SERB. We're excited to see what you build.